As Anthony Joshua looks to rebuild his legacy, Eddie Hearn thinks his next fight will be the most iconic or shattering moment of his career. But why? Well, he's out if he loses his next fight. Yep, Joshua's career has taken a rather destructive path after the heavyweight suffered two consecutive defeats to Alexander Usyk. And while the Watford powerhouse actively looks for a new boxing coach, promoter Eddie Hearn has promised fans a massive fight, featuring AJ on the 1st of April. It's still unclear who he'll be fighting, but according to Hearn, it's going to be a really high-profile matchup. Joshua and his team are willing to negotiate with Tyson Fury and Deontay Wilder, but not for April 1st. Eddie has a different plan in mind. He wants to set up an epic clash in the summer after Anthony secures a win over someone like Dillian White. So look at it this way. He'll take on White on April 1st in a high-voltage rematch. And provided he wins, there's going to be a more serious showdown in July. And that's probably going to be against either Fury or Wilder. All that is fine, but you do realize he's out if he loses his next fight, right? Think about it. Three losses in a row. It's really hard to come back from something like that. Keeping this in mind, April 1st is key. There's literally so much on the line because if he loses, it's all over for him. But is this just a tactic to duck Deontay Wilder? Why do I say that? Because about a month back, fighting the Bronze Bomber was all AJ could think about. It's true, he was eager to fight Wilder because it would help him somewhat recover from the two consecutive losses. And I'm not taking anything away from Dillian, but Joshua will still need to do some proving, even if he wins in April. Oh, and just so you know, none of these fights are confirmed yet. All this is just some speculation as to what could possibly happen. But yeah, back to what I was saying. Until Anthony fights a real competitor like Wilder or Fury, his career will always have a huge question mark. And I'm not sure if you remember, but Roy Jones Jr. pretty much warned Joshua to not fight Deontay in his next fight. The boxing legend even said AJ should only look to bring him in as coach if he's willing to ditch that matchup. And while he's yet to make a decision about who's going to be his trainer, it seems like he's taken his advice. Even Eddie understands the dynamics and wants him to fight someone other than the big guns. But Deontay's coach, Malik Scott, claims Joshua is running away from his fighter. He is ducking him because it's a clear defeat. Well, I'm no coach or promoter, but isn't that the whole point of rebuilding? Finding your footing by fighting someone good but not elite like Fury or Wilder? Honestly speaking, he's doing the right thing here. He shouldn't try to sabotage his career through an emergency evacuation. It's totally okay if he takes his time, but his eagerness to make an immediate comeback will cost him. You can sort of tell how Joshua is feeling right now. All his potential opponents are counting him out, and even the fans think he's on a decline now. And because of all that, Anthony wants to make a comeback as soon as possible. He doesn't want to have to take the longer route to either Fury or Wilder, because believe it or not, his mega clash against either of the two top heavyweights isn't exactly scheduled for July. It's scheduled for December. Eddie Hearn wants him to fight someone from the top 15 in April, take on White in July, and then finally fight the top heavyweights. But it's actually AJ who's trying to rush the process. He wants to get past all the criticism and hatred and rise to the top as soon as possible. And honestly, that's not going to work too well in his favor. AJ wants to be in the biggest fights possible. And if a bigger fight rears its head, there are only two bigger fights in the division than Dillian White. That's Tyson Fury and Deontay Wilder. I hope he knows what he's getting into by skipping important fights. He needs to rebuild his confidence, and the only way to do that is by winning. It's not going to happen by chasing a big fight. But if not that way, then how? Well, he might take the traditional route, considering the talks going on with Dimitri Salita.
Yes, you heard me. The Watford powerhouse may just be willing to take the longer and more practical route, as American boxer Jermaine Franklin might be the next target. Franklin's promoter, Dimitri Salida, recently confirmed both sides are in talks for a potential matchup sometime in April. But it's not like this is going to make it any easier for AJ. His potential opponent, Jermaine, is eager to showcase his skills. He wants all the British boxing fans to acknowledge him as the best American heavyweight in the world. And the only way to do that? Take on Anthony Joshua and beat the living daylights out of him. It seems like everyone is out to get him these days. And do you want to know why? Because he's an easy target. It's literally out there. Everyone knows he's trying to rebuild himself and find his confidence. But at the same time, imagine being the boxer who buries AJ and finishes his career. They'll probably go down in the history books. The heavyweight who officially ended Anthony Joshua's career. But what if he's destined to cross paths with his nemesis again? Tyson Fury versus Ukrainian Alexander Usyk is almost done. And you know what that means, right? Well, this might be a bit far-fetched, but I want you to imagine how things might play out. What if Usyk manages to edge out a victory over the Gypsy King? What then? Will Joshua have to face him all over again and risk a third consecutive loss against him? Or will he duck him and try to go after Deontay Wilder? Or check this. Usyk wins over Fury, and Deontay fights the Ukrainian and loses as well. Then what? Anthony will be left with nothing but Alexander, and the odds will be very high. But yeah, you can bet your house on the fact that he's going to be taking on either of these three gentlemen, if he gets past April 1st. Because, like Eddie said, if he's unable to win in April, it's game over for him, and his dream of fighting three times in 2023 won't really matter. Plus, did you know he might have zeroed in on who's going to be his new trainer? According to Robert Garcia, Derek James. Yes, that's the guy who will be responsible for guiding Joshua as he rebuilds his career. We're a bit sad because there were a lot of rumors going around about how Roy Jones Jr. would possibly take up the position of head trainer in AJ's camp. It would have been a lethal combination. Just imagine a reborn Joshua with a boxing legend like Jones in his corner. Absolutely crazy. But Derek James isn't exactly a bad option either. And this might be a bit harsh or unexpected, but I think the only way to figure out whether James is the right trainer is AJ's next fight. If he lets him fight someone like Wilder or Fury for his next appearance inside the cage, he obviously isn't willing to take the time and rebuild him. But if Derek makes him wait and fight an easier match to gain confidence before fighting the big boys, I think he's made the right decision. So that's everything going on in Anthony Joshua's career. Thanks for watching and see you next time.